just hold this and record. Is it recording? Yeah. Alright, this is what you consider a Coleman torque? No, no, this side's tight. Oh, this side's tight. Yeah, I can't get that off. Yeah, this side's tight. The other side was finger tight. That's I know. The other side was like... The flick of the wrist. Oh, yeah. So what are we doing today, Coleman? Uh, starting the install of some yellow speed coilovers. So we got to drop all the suspension, get the spindles, and then have them welded. Hopefully you can go low, even though he's on 17s. Uh, you can go low on 17s. I want to see Tuck. We're going to Tuck the rear. I want to see Tuck on the front. I want to see you lift on the floor. So this should be pretty straightforward. We're loosening what the tie rod, we'll loosen the lower control arm, we'll remove the caliper and the brake rotor. Once we do that, we'll just loosen the three, we'll remove the three bolts, nuts, or whatever's on the top, and this whole thing should pop out. Coleman will take it to top speed, get that welded up. So they'll cut the housing, which is this piece right here. They'll cut it shorter. We'll probably leave 30 mil, I think that's what the right, 20 or 30 mil from the bottom up. And then the new coilover will actually just slide over, it has a sleeve, and then it gets welded all the way on the bottom. Once that's done, then we'll be able to thread in the coilover, and we'll be golden. We'll have the front ready, the rear's gonna be super easy, it's all bolt-on. Uh, the cool thing about the yellow speeds is that they're inverted, so that actually helps with fluid temperature that way it doesn't get hot with the brake rotor um, that's one of the benefits of it there's probably many more i just can't think of all those since yeah. i just have a regular basic bc yeah i don't remember all the benefits for it it does it makes it easier to well the adjustment the way they have the adjustment set up is kind of cool especially for the rear because the dampening adjustments at the bottom yeah instead of the top so he doesn't have to go through the trunk yeah so it makes that easier the front though is interesting because the bottom of the spindle is closed but the adjuster for the front coilover is on the bottom inside there. So you actually have to drop the suspension and unthread every unthread the coilover from itself. To adjust the dampening. Adjust the dampening. So we might come up with a fix for it. Yeah. So we might drill a hole in the bottom and use some like BC or airlift um, strut extenders for the dampening. Um, but I guess we'll find out. Right now it's not a big deal. You set it up to Yeah, I set it like midway. So midway on the front. Down. Eight foot in on the rear. I want the rear to be a little softer. So. Yeah, we want the rear to to dump a little bit whenever he gets on throttle. And that Not way it upsets the the rear and he's able to get it, you know, sideways a little bit better. So everything's disconnected that I need to disconnect. Uh, Stefan's going to get the hammer and bust the lower control arm free in the tie rod. And then it should be able to just unbolt from up top and drop it out completely. There we go. Lower control arm is out. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it's loose. One side done, one more to go. That was honestly a lot easier than I expected it to be. I mean, I guess we're used to like Volkswagens where you have like the axle up front and it's like the pinch bolt and everything else, which 
it's going to be a pain in the ass. And usually I just let Stefan do it. <laughs> now we just got to loosen the three bolts on the top. And I got to get my broom handle so I can... Where's your, yeah, where's your cane? My hood stays open. Let's undo these three nuts right here real quick. Boom. All the you need to go buy the freaking $10 strut. Nobody has it in stock. Danger avoided. So we got that off. It's gonna look so much better to have like expensive coilovers rather than blown bill schemes. Like even the dust boot is blown on this thing. Yeah, that looks really bad. Oh shit. Yeah, this thing. The spring perch had a fucking thing on it. Yeah. Come on, Coleman. It was two guys, one shaft, but one of the guys had to get off the shaft to hold the camera. So you getting you didn't get to see all the action. Yeah, fucking sucks. Alright, so I have one spindle cut. Not very pretty, but it's cut. And at the right length so now I just got to do the other one and then we can work on welding on the bottom of the coiler. I forgot to film, but we have one side in. Got to figure out the ride height thing because I'm not really sure how low it needs to be since I went like a million size up and tire and wheel size. So we'll see what rubs and what doesn't. Yeah, the ignition so I can like sure. tight. You're fine. Should we jack the other side up? No, as long as the jack doesn't move. That's the thing. I feel like it's gonna move. You're fine. Moment of truth. We'll see how bad it's gonna rub. Not bad. I think we did pretty good right off the bat, so we're not going to be like hitting. We still need to go about what, like another inch down? Probably. I feel like a little bit of rear rake still. Yeah. It Just a tad bit. It definitely needs to come down in the front though. Yeah, because the rear is like fucking tire and just a tear. And that is bottom and a half. A tad bit better. There's less of a gap between the top of the tire. Oh, those are stiff. <laughs> I know, I'm telling you. That's actually exactly where we wanted it, almost a little bit lower. 24 and a half we were aiming for, right? So 24 and a half on this side. That side's just a hair lower. But... Just a hair lower. Really not much point in trying to get another eighth of an inch on each side. It's still going to be good enough. I need to drive it and we'll probably end up lowering it more with more camber if it doesn't rub. It should drop a little bit once the springs kind of get settled in, kind of get worn in. And I guess now we're going to do the rear. I'm going to jack it up from the dip, put the yeah. jack stands underneath, and then uh, we'll show you how the rear is. Pretty simple, I think it's one yeah. bolt. One bolt at the bottom and then two at the top. 
What about the spring? Spring. The one that's on it? Yeah, because it's separate, isn't it? No. It's a true four No, on the factory suspension. The factory suspension, we're going with true coilovers in the rear, but the factory suspension is a little bit oh, different. Yeah, we have to shave stuff. Shave what? Well, good thing we have a big old hammer, so I guess we'll use the hammer to make some self clearancing. This will be good. So we did not undo this bolt, we did it on both sides. Since uh, he had lowering springs, there was less tension on here, so they were shorter, so we we're actually able to just grab them and pull them out. If you're on factory suspension, you might have to stand on this and try and give it a little bit more droop. That way you can try and get it out if you're able to. Um, yeah, because it kind of binds on the subframe over there. So yeah, that's about as far down as it'll go. So you might have to get like a spring compressor for the factory springs, um, put them on there and then kind of compress the spring and try and pop it out. Um, another thing that we noticed on Coleman's car is that he had the brake, uh, what's the light? The brake, the brake, brake light, lining, like brake, brake lining, lining light. Well, his wires aren't connected to anything because this one actually, I guess, is missing the wear sensor that goes in between the pads. Um, so an easy fix is just to cut the cables or the wires shorter, um, and then you'll remove the shielding and then connect both wires together. That will complete the circuit and that will remove the light from the actual dash. Um, and then I actually just noticed that your CV axle's yeah. messed up. Yeah, I need to Inner and outer, easy. like this completely ruined on the inside. Toasted. We also got some really nice Gargistic reinforcement plates for the top, which is uh, highly recommended, especially going with the true coilover. Yeah, because these will, or the top of the, yeah, the strut housing, completely blow its ass out. And it's just like, and while that's that'd be good bad. for internet views, we definitely don't want that today. <laughs> um, since we're doing a true coilover, we might have to do some hammering of the actual body yeah. on the inside which for clearance. Kind of concerning since there's fuel related things there but we also have to raise these because i just lowered them all yeah the way. he we're definitely gonna have to raise these um i wanted to slam it the only the thing i'm gonna see that might cause an issue is these collars rubbing against it just depends but yeah these are like <laughs> they're not that bad though as far as height you're like yeah, what? it's close three four inches off yeah i mean we'll raise them up and then try and figure out the clearance issues um the good thing is that these are inverted, so the spring's on the bottom. So we shouldn't have too much of a clearance issue, hopefully. It may just it may just bind on this right here. That's yeah. what I'm seeing. Hopefully not, though. I guess we'll find out in the next, like, five minutes once we do undo the two bolts on the top. One yeah. of the two nuts. So we'll probably measure these and make them the same length, and then we'll throw them on real quick. All right, we're back again. We got passenger side set up. Fitment on the passenger side with the true coilover is legit. The credit card, debit card between the top of the collar and the um, the body. The body, pretty much. It's a tight fit, but it's not like super, super close. It's enough to where I'm like, eh, maybe we can get by. But we may have to come back and beat it with a hammer though, or save some stuff. With off. Big Bertha. Yeah, Big Bertha the hammer. But we're gonna see if, how the wheel fits. It looks super sick though. Oh, it's a very easy install. Three, yeah, pretty three much bolts. Three, three bolts or two nuts, one bolt. Um, I mean, the rear is in general is pretty easy, even if it's not coilover. But this makes it just one less step. Nothing, nothing to fly out at you when you decompress stuff. Yeah. This has to be the carefulest, most careful install of a lug nut on a wheel I've ever seen. Scratch up these babies. Got to keep those connects fresh. Oh yeah. Wheel clearance, we have like an inch, inch and a half. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty freaking dark, but yeah, we have clearance for days. So we should be good. And then we just got to tighten the nut on the back. I mean, it has no rake, but it's not low. <laughs> that almost kills you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to change that. That's better. If that that's as low as it goes though. I think my BCs go lower. Probably. 
a good happy face or a sad happy face? I mean, it's a mediocre happy face, I guess. It's not bad, though. I mean, they'll settle more probably. Uh, like am, am I? Oh, gosh. Yeah, you're going to have to roll these fenders. Man, they were, there you go. We can see them. It's rubbing up front still. So we're gonna go for a quick drive, even though it sounds like it's gonna die. It doesn't sound very good. It sounds like it's not happy with what you did to it. It's never happy. It's already rubbing up front. It's okay. Is that rubbing in the rear that I hear? Not yet. We'll find out in a sec. Especially with those like, that. look at those forearms. Oh, I think I, that's for sure rubbing on the passenger side. In the front or the rear? That was the front, I think. Oh, it's a plane. What? I hear a plane. I thought you were about that stance life. I am. I'm not about stance life, but that, that rubs. Don't worry, you have Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, I do have a seatbelt. I don't. It's okay. I mean, the seatbelt won't do much here in this car anyways. What do you think? Feels like some coilovers. And rubbing like crazy in the rear. It's probably everything in your trunk. The hell? Do yeah. you tighten down the ball joint and tie rock? Yeah. Well, that is not good news. I think of what else. I mean, there's only there's only a couple bolts up front that you could really tighten down, which would be the upper strut mount, the ball joint, the tie rod. Whatever it is, it's good. You tighten down the caliper bolts really good? Yeah. But I, don't, I still don't know what. We might need to do a bolt check. Yeah. Limping it back. It's a sad moment right now after you spend your life savings. What the heck? What is that? Alright, let's just limp it back. Alright, Coleman went to go grab a freaking uh, 17 9, whatever size socket this is. And um, yeah, it looks like I was pretty accurate. Let's see. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Damn it, Coleman! That's, that's the walk of shame over there where he has to go get a jack. Poor little Coleman walking down with a jack. At least you got you were smart enough to get the small one. I may be smarter than that. Man, I feel like Rafa's is smarter than this. yourself so all your followers
And now what? We know it rubs in the back. Well, yeah, with you in it. Wow. <laughs> it's only like 140 pounds of sexiness. Maybe 150. It's not rubbing terrible though. No. I think it probably didn't really help that um that side was not even tight. I'll probably go to Ross's later and fix it. Fix what? The rubbing issue. Yeah, maybe get some like newspapers or watch some YouTubes. Figure out something since we don't have a fender roller for the four lug. Yeah. Either that'd be a sense of the hammer. That's what I did. I just didn't care because my paint's all messed up and my core panels are all messed up from the accident. Well, I guess, I guess we'll call it that for now. We'll get it aligned and then um, we'll see uh, Coleman do some skids at the end of this video, I guess. Alright Coleman. Later. Lasers.